genome sequenced. Uh, I'm also involved in several kinds of research involving nature and nurture and behavioral genetics. And it, putting these often contradictory streams of data together leads to an interesting conundrum that uh, my, whoops, that uh, one of my collaborators has called uh, Geno's Paradox. And uh, I'm going to say a few words today about uh, Geno's Paradox. It begins with a remarkable uh, statement from the behavioral geneticist Eric Turkheimer about eight years ago that the nature-nurture debate is over. Uh, in particular, what he proposed as the first law of behavioral genetics is that all behavioral traits are heritable, which is to say that a significant proportion of the variation in a behavioral trait among the members of a culture is caused by variation in the genes. And that proviso is important because the nature-nurture debate is certainly not over when it comes to human universals, what makes us different from, say, chimpanzees, sex differences, what makes men and women different, and group differences, what makes different ethnic group differences. But within an ethnic group, what makes one individual different from another individual is, in a, a certain sense, uh, well understood. Uh, this comes from a lot of research in behavioral genetics that has discovered that in just about any trait you measure, monozygotic twins who share all of their genes and more or less all of their environment are far more highly correlated than dizygotic twins who share only half their genes and all their environment. That monozygotic twins who are separated at birth and reared in separate environments are uh, highly correlated and that biological siblings who share half their genes and all of their environment are far more highly correlated than adoptive siblings who share none of their genes and all of their environment. Now, in all these studies, there are numerous confounds, many of which I'm sure have occurred to you, even uh, processing the information in this slide. But using the, the uh, most appropriate multivariate statistics to control for them, the first law, namely that all behavioral traits show some degree of heritability, survives. And this uh, conclusion is more or less summarized in the famous Charles Adams cartoon from The New Yorker, separated at birth, the Malifert twins meet accidentally, showing two identical nerdy-looking guys with indistinguishable contraptions in their laps in the waiting room of a, of a patent attorney. Uh, and to appreciate how uh, revolutionary this the set of findings is, in the 1970s, there was a live debate as to whether the heritability of IQ it, could be distinguished from zero. There is still a controversy. Uh, it, those of you who are familiar with uh, Dick Nisbet's recent book, Intelligence and How to Get It, know that there is still some uh, disagreement, but it's over whether the heritability of IQ is closer to 0.8 or 0 0.4. Uh, among other traits that have shown to be heritable in this sense are uh, all of the dimensions of personality, degree of re religiosity, political orientation on the left wing to right wing spectrum, suscept susceptibility to psychological disorders, autism, schizophrenia, depression, and just about every other one, and measurable, quantifiable behavior, how many cigarettes you smoke per day, how much alcohol you drink, how many hours of television you watch, they will be correlated with the identical twin that you never met who may have been brought up on a different continent. The second stream of uh, evidence that defines the paradox comes from the genomic revolution, the fact that genotyping has been following Moore's law, that is the price of genotyping and sequencing has been uh, plunging exponentially. Uh, with, and today it is feasible to correlate any trait you care to measure with candidate genes or using uh, what are called SNP chips, uh, half a million or more loci in which people in the population vary in uh, what are called genome-wide association studies. And so we can go from the abstract statistical construct of heritability to, in theory, identifying the particular genes that make us smarter or duller, bolder or shyer, and so on. Uh, and the uh, result of these studies, including a large-scale one that I've been associated with, can be summed up in a, a cartoon that ran in Science Magazine uh, a while back, showing a scientist holding a smoldering test tube, te saying to his colleague, what's the opposite of Eureka? <laughs> <coughs> uh, an example is a study done by Robert Plowman and his colleagues in England where they looked at 6,000 children 
four genes correlated with intelligence and found that the one with the largest effect accounted for one quarter of an IQ point. Uh, now, when it comes to personality, uh, there, the results have been a bit more promising. There are genes that have been associated with approach-related personality traits, with a susceptibility to depression following a life stressor, with antisocial behavior, although even there, there have been replication failures and, and none of the results is completely solid. This is what, uh, following uh, uh, the, the term of biology Srinivasan, we call Geno's paradox, namely that traits we know to be highly heritable can't be associated with common genes of large effect. How uh, can we resolve Geno's paradox? There are several possibilities. One of them is that there are important sources of genetic variation other than single nucleotide polymorphisms, that is places in which uh, one base pair in the genome differs uh, among people compared to uh, uh, other alleles. It may be that there are copy number variations, deletions, insertions, large-scale rearrangements of uh, chromosomes that affect gene expression and hence behavioral traits in ways that aren't picked up by the economical uh, genome-wide uh, surveys. Second possibility is that there are lots and lots of genes of minuscule effect, that it may be true that there are genes for IQ, but there are hundreds or even thousands of them, uh, no single one of which accounts for more than a trifling proportion of the variance, but which cumulatively uh, affect who we are. And that seems to be true of certain traits like height, which we know to be highly heritable, in which genome-wide association studies have identified uh, about 15 genes, but which collectively account for no more than 2 percent of the variation in height. And a third possibility is that there are genes of moderate or large effect, but that they are uh, idiosyncratic to individual people and hence won't be picked up in large-scale statistical surveys. That is, uh, each of us may have uh, our own stupidity genes that we don't share with large numbers of our fellow humans. Uh, these uh, resolutions can be and will be tested as uh, studies with much larger sample sizes are done, which increase the statistical power. I had my own genome sequenced as part of George Church's personal genome project at Harvard Medical School, where I was one of the first 10 people to be completely genotyped and indeed eventually completely sequenced. The goal is eventually to have 100,000 people with full genomes and full sets of medical and in many cases psychological traits, uh, which will allow these uh, to be resolved. Possible implications are um, interesting in terms of a larger theory of how humans evolved, and Jeffrey Miller and his collaborators have uh, spelled them out. The most plausible theory as to why we're in this state of affairs is that variation in intelligence uh, is, in effect, evolutionary noise, the result of mutations dripping into the gene pool faster than natural selection can weed them out. The idea is that any mutations that uh, had the effect of uh, implementing large increases in intelligence were a kind of low-hanging fruit that were selected for and incorporated in the genome uh, long ago. Uh, at, at this point, all of those potential mutations have been used up, and the, uh, we're reaching a point of diminishing returns given the overall neurodevelopmental um, a program of, uh, uh, of um, great apes or uh, the human variation therein. Variation in personality, should it turn out that the single gene associations hold up, uh, may be caused by a different evolutionary mechanism, namely uh, frequency-dependent selection, that is, genes that are advantageous when rare, and there are a number of plausible models according to which variations in personality, such as being a bit more uh, self-serving or a bit more altruistic, a bit more cautious or a bit more daring, uh, can survive at proportions greater than zero or less than 100 percent because uh, whether they are advantageous depends on how many other people in the population uh, have those. And moreover, there are reasons from population genetic analyses to expect that many of them would be controlled by single genes in contrast to intelligence where basically the situation is the smarter the better. Uh, uh, if so, 
that making sense of Geno's paradox would be yet another illustration of the, uh, the Theodosius Dobzhansky's uh, statement, now a cliche, but still a profound one, that nothing in biology makes sense except in light of evolution. Thank you very much.